And ultimately, when we think about the message we're sending to Congress, we want to kind of change the way, we're, the way even they're thinking about this. And all of us are thinking about it because we've been leading with food aid. And we want to say, yes, food aid is important, but food aid is important when we can't ha because we haven't been able to get enough people uh, out of poverty and be able to have access to their own food. So let's go into leading with food security and ultimately using all of these tools to end hunger. Um, in order to do that, we also have to get, I think, more serious about trade. Agriculture is such a critical part of our uh, trade portfolio. Uh, it's, it's, critically, it's absolutely critically important, but we could be much more um, progressive uh, in working on trade issues and on um, uh, working on systems that are more based on market-based agriculture. Um, and, uh, uh, and, and including, I've put in, put in uh, eliminating the, uh, the mandate for the uh, biofuels um, at the pump. Um, I think in any sort of a real discussion of, um, of uh, trade issues, this is going to come up over and over again as it does uh, in, in uh, many different contexts about food, feeding people. Um, and. Um, uh, and then also we should put in our own uh, direction to our own ambassadors around the world to work with countries on their issues, on re reducing their trade inefficiency, on their checkpoints, on their transportation costs, on increasing their efficiency, all important as well. Um, can't have, talk about this topic without talking about agriculture research and also about the land-grant universities around the country. Um, our, our commitment as a country to supporting agriculture research has slowed. Um, the uh, uh, support for innovation is critically important as we continue. And, um, and we really should be doing much more as a country to build on the excellence of the U.S. land grant system and all the things that are available there. Look for a minute at what some other countries are doing. China. Uh, has increased its, its public agriculture research spending. It's doubled it just from 2000 to 2008. Um, Brazil's budget has increased 20% in 11 years. Um, and uh, uh, the uh, productivity in China grew 136%, Brazil 176%, compared to an average of an 82% growth in the, um, uh, in the developing countries. And, then if we look at U.S. productivity growth, our rates are half of what they were um, uh, from 50 to 1989. And as the president of EFAD says, there's no coincidence that in countries where agriculture has taken off, there have been large investments in research and in infrastructure. And we certainly have had that in the past. We need to do more in the future. Um, we have so many comparative advantages. We have the advantage of research, the advantage of technology, the advantage of our great university land grant system, uh, the development experience that we've had, the farming expertise. And so we have so many opportunities to extend U.S. goodwill and strengthen our international standing using these kind of things as some of our soft power, as some of our ways to help countries um, work their way out of poverty. You know, this is a, a U.S. interest it's an interest for commercial purposes. I talked about trade options before. It's an interest for political purposes in terms of our presenting ourselves in this way around the world. It's certainly an interest for us as human beings and our moral responsibility to help people who are, um, who are in great need in ways that we can um, help using our own expertise to help them. And finally, it's become a security issue. And uh, if, for, if any one of these reasons about U.S. interests are enough reason to invest in agriculture development and prioritize it, but security is becoming more and more of a compelling reason to do so. You know, in John Kennedy's time, he said his vision was to put a man on the moon. Our vision could very easily be end hunger in our lifetimes. <laughs>